G'day, this is Jim with Urban Self Sufficiency. Today we're going to be taking a look at soft plastic lure making. I've done a video on this in the past, but I wanted to update the series with a bunch of videos that are a little bit more targeted to each of these steps. And the first step in this is creating your master. This is the mold or the sculpt that you mold off of to create your soft plastic mold. In this case, I will be using uh, silicon to make the mold. It's flexible so it's easy to get the lures out. This is what you pour the plastic lure into. Now to get this we first must build your master. So what we do is we build this out of a polymer clay which I'll show you in a minute and we build a wall around this once it's completed and we pour the silicon in and then we take the wall away and once the silicon is cured and, and we pull this off. That's what creates your, your mold. This is what we use time and time again for your lures. So obviously before we do that, we need to construct this. We do this by designing the lure that you want to make and then fashioning it out of clay. Now that polymer clay I mentioned is like this. So it's basically a make and bake clay. It's polymer clay that you is nice and soft like um, plasticine or Play-Doh. And when you put it in the oven, it firms up and goes quite hard. So this stuff here, this brand is Montmart. It cost me $14 for 400 grams, so that's just under a pound. The other brand that a lot of people use is called Sculpey. It's spelled S-C-U-L-P-E-Y. Uh, the only reason I went with this one over Sculpey was because it was $13.95 for that 400 grams or just under a pound, whereas the Sculpey was uh, more than double the price. It was $35. So. I went with this and it worked exactly the same. So have a look for that. The important thing is it's polymer clay and it's one that you baked to firm up. That's all you really need to look for. The next step obviously is to create your design. Now I drew my design, um, but you can always uh, have a soft plastic that you've bought from the store uh, to reference. Um, I actually started with this one here and drew my design from that. I did make a few changes in the shape, the length of the body and the length of the tail, but the overall size was what I went for. Um, one of the key things though when you're doing this is probably to make sure that you have the intended tackle uh, at hand for when you're drawing up your design or making your, your sculpt so that you can ensure that the design suits the tackle that you're intending to use. So you can see with this one here, it's the perfect size. Okay, so you need a ceramic tile as well so that you can see this one's actually stuck on there. Um, that's It gets it's stuck on there when you bake it down, but you, I actually use this as a work surface. Uh, and the ceramic tile means that you can put it into the oven to bake this firm once you've completed the sculpt. And in addition to that, you may also need some tools. So things like this. You can get these from the hobby store as well. I got a pack of them for about $10, which had a whole range of tools in there that I didn't really use. Um, this one here is the one that I actually like the most because it's got a nice sort of flat cutting surface. And on the other end, it's got a spoon-like shape. It's concave here and it has a nice point. So that was a really good tool. I used that pretty much exclusively to design this or to make this. And that's pretty much it for the tool, so we'll get into it. Uh, texturally, compared to the Sculpey, this is a, maybe a little bit drier. Just a little bit drier. I don't know how that's going to play out, but we'll see. Now, when you first Get out of the packet, you've just got to apply it, apply it around, sort of work it. This is the more you work it before you start using it, the more malleable it gets. So I'm going to redact my statement about this being drier and less malleable than the Sculpey brand. It's in its resting state, it felt that way, but now that I'm working it in, it actually feels pretty good. Good tip, just 
you start with the body basically. So if you want to just roll a piece out that's slightly bigger than the body that you're trying to create, and then you take it off. Just flattening the sides a little bit. It's about the right thickness, but it's um, at the moment the sides are very parallel to each other. I want to draw the nose and tail in a little bit. Okay, well, until now, obviously I've just been working it in my hands, but I think I'm close enough to start looking at actually uh, fixing this down onto here so that I can then start working it. So I'm going to go centrally, a little off center because obviously we've got the tail to go. I'm going to put the body right in the middle and then have the tail get close to the edge. So I'm going to move this forward a little bit. And I'm just going to apply some pressure to firm that down. Squeeze the sides a bit to get to get that back up. So I put, put the pressure down and I've squashed it and then I'm just on the sides to bring it back. As I'm doing this, because I want the shape to be more of a football shape, so narrow at the, the ends. As I'm pushing these in, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work the, the tips in a bit finer. This here is is, is convex or oh concave depending on which way you look at it but it's it's a spoon shaped tip this one I quite like it, it narrows in and it's got the, the fact that it's concave on this side means that I can work it without the edges digging into the polymer so I can sort of have this sort of without it without it cutting in uh, so this is quite a good tool and I'm going to use this to define the, the edges a bit by dragging this along that seam where the clay meets the tile. And when I want to do this, I'm going to support the back side with my finger so I don't drag this off the tile. Like that. I keep a, a piece of this stuff just to the side here. Because as you're scraping and working the material small amounts of it will come off and I just gather that up and, and stick it there rather than creating a mess and this is the tail here it's still it's a bit high I want this to sort of arch up at the top and then swoop down towards the tail if we take the, the original here sort of get to that idea where it's it's got the bulk at the top and then it swoops down to the tail so I want to try and recreate that Now, since I've worked this side, and it's looking pretty good, when I work this down, I'm gonna try and pull that excess down this side, to the unworked side. You can see it's lifting a little bit in the, the corner there. So I'm just gonna work that edge back down to the tile. It's looking pretty good from this side. I need to taper this in a little bit here. So I'm just going to use my, my tool to sort of work that. And then use my finger to, to drag it back around. I think one of the most important things for doing this is to be patient you've really got to be interested in the craft as well because I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of people going 
screw that. Oh, I'll just buy them. And that's fair enough. But I can tell you one thing, there is a certain satisfaction in catching a fish on a lure that you've created right from the beginning. Not just from a store-bought mold, something that you've put the attention and effort into creating yourself. Even if you borrow the design of a proven, well-manufactured lure, the beauty of of this is that you can make it your own. You take that concept from a design and improve it or adjust it even to suit what you're wanting to do with it. All right, it's time to show you what it looks like from the top. Don't worry about the, sh the shadowed side. We haven't worked on that edge yet, but you can see I've got somewhat of a flat shape here and then it tapers away. Now, when you're working the other side, I want to view from the, the top and Im imagine, you can even draw it, I suppose you can smooth it out later, a line right down the center or where you want the center to be and then try and cut away the excess to, a, to the exact shape that you're seeing on this side. And I want to be fairly straight through here. Just going to draw that all the way to the back. And then just, it starts to curve back towards the tail about here on the other side. So I'm just going to, this one, back to about there. So I'm just going to angle. And draw the knife all the way through. And then I'm going to cut away the excess. And I'm going to do that at the very front as well. Before I do that, I'm going to have a look at the length. Yep, so right about here. I'm just looking at it from this angle so that I can even the sides up. It's starting to look really good actually. Pretty happy with the way this is turning out so far. I think the best thing about this is it's a very easy sort of shape. You don't have to have any real exemplary skills in sculpting to do it. You see my length and the measure here? This is actually the back, but I'm just I'm just using this as a, a, a to measure length. The tail really needs to end somewhere around here. So before I cut the tail or or, or manipulate that, I'm gonna finish the front. Um, so to do that, I'm just using my thumb. Now the reason I'm doing this, this way, but by flattening it off, I know that I've got length here to work with, but I just want to flatten that down because it creates a good curve here nice and flat because of the edge of my thumb but it's also compressing hopefully just here against the tile and you can see it's bulged out a bit here and on the other side so following all of the curves both this way and on the side I'm going to cut that excess away See it bulging out here. Okay, this, this next bit's gonna be difficult for me to show on camera, but basically I just wanna rub this side to just make this nice and clean at the front. Now 
Now remember, this flat edge is actually going to be the top of it. Like that. So when you create the mold, it'll actually sit this way. So this is the belly of the fish. So it's like a little bit of a minnow shape. Let's go back to my de design. For the length, tail really needs to end about here and become the, well, say, sorry, the body needs to end about here and become the tail. So I'm just cutting this to a point which will round over I think that looks pretty good So there it is from above. You can see it sort of tapers. Probably need to pinch just the, the nose just a little bit more. But we can do that in the final stages. Let's get the tail done. I've rolled that into a ball. What we're going to do is take our thumb and just push that down. And we're going to spread this out now. The tail does need to be quite thin and that's so that it gives it enough flexibility to give you that movement that we want through the water. You can use a, a flat edged pen or a piece of dowel, in my case the tools happen to work perfectly for this but we're going to roll this out. If you're wondering, the consistency of this is just a little bit firmer than Play-Doh. So I'm just going to cut a straight edge along here. Get rid of that. And what I want to do is cut a channel for the end of the this, because we're going to peel this off and slip it up onto here. So. Just like that, and then very carefully, very carefully work this off. Get that bit of a clean. Now you can see another good reason why to keep this a little bit thicker than normal is when you peel that off. If even by being very careful, it's going to stretch this even thinner again. I'm just going to replace that against the back edge of our mold. Now, when I roll this like this, I'm working towards the body. Okay, it's gonna push more mass up here, which is gonna hopefully meet this curve at the back edge a little bit nicer. And we've got a pretty good seal here, but we're going to just very carefully work this into each other. I'm just gonna work that form a seal. Alright, that's pretty good. Now, just reference my design. If you're wondering what I did there, it was very light just to create a, a defined top. Now that I've got rid of the excess, I'm going to to work on flattening this out a, a bit more to, to get it closer to its final size. That's getting pretty good. 
that's a pretty good thickness actually now between one and two millimeters I think it's probably probably about right and because this tail is so uh, so shallow a good idea is to make sure that the walls or what's going to become the walls in the tail here this, this is the wall here you can see that the shape of it you, you want to have it nice and square um, not peter out as much you'll get a better edge on it um, if it's too if it comes if it's too shallow it'll, it'll come to a very fine point and the problem with that is when you've got too fine of a point on the edge here it's a lot easier for it to tear so I take it the flat side and I sort of get it flat against the uh, the tile and then tap to make sure I've got a square edge and just tap and work that to get that square edge it's very important And in fact, doing this when you're tapping on the edges makes it very easy to uh, modify the final shape as well. It's a bit more difficult when you've got to do the inside. But we'll tackle that when it gets when it gets to that point. I want to thank you for sticking with me for this long. I know this is pretty tedious stuff, but hopefully I'm you know, learning something. We're pretty much done. I, the only concern I have with this here is that I think it's just a little bit too thin right here. Oh, it looks alright. This one here. Yeah, it might, might just be a bit too thin here. I'm quite happy with that. Now, in the oven, you just place this in open, not covered or anything like that. And it goes into an oven preheated at between 120 to 130 degrees Celsius. So that's around 248 to 266 Fahrenheit. And it goes in for 30 minutes. That's this particular polymer clay. The others might be different, but it sounds about what the sculpey used to use. Uh, you can't use a microwave to cure this stuff, it has to be done in the oven. Now it does discolour if it gets too too well cooked. I'm going to get this prepared now and put it in the oven uh, and we'll see how we go. Alright, it's been about 15 minutes so I'm just going to check it before I allow it to go any further. Uh, it's still, I, I can still feel it, it's quite hot, but I can still feel that it's got a little bit of um, softness to it, just from the, from the touch. And it hasn't really brought out any colour yet, so we'll, we'll give it maybe another, uh, say 10 minutes, 5 or 10 minutes, before I check it again. Right, it's not leaving any marks when I put my fingernail into it. It's been, been about 45 minutes now, uh, it, maybe even closer to 50 minutes. It hasn't really started to discolour. 
It has a little bit of springiness when I touch my nail against it, but as I said, it's not leaving any marks, so I'm pretty happy that that's done now. And we'll just wait for that to cool and see how it goes. Here's a completed sculpt. It did firm up, it took about 20 minutes to half an hour to cool down until I was comfortable to pick this up. And it's now ready to be converted into a silicon mold. Look out for that in the next video, and until next time, take it easy.